I welcome you to the launch of Dragonology, a user group for Dragon speech recognition and productivity applications. Do we still have some funny noise up there? Thanks so much for coming along tonight to share your interest in Dragon. I also want to acknowledge the 600 plus Australian Dragon users who let us know that they couldn't be here tonight, but they were interested in staying in touch. So they will be able to watch the presentations on the web soon, and I hope I'm talking to some of them now, um, watching in the future, as it were, this being the week of Back to the Future. Call me old fashioned, but I thought it was important that we have a physical launch event to celebrate Dragonology, and I'm certain there'll be more meetings in other cities and a lot more online action in the future as well. My name is Derek Austin, and setting up Dragonology has been a bit of a personal project for me this year. More on that later on. First, I'd like to let you hear from Nuance Communications, and really, Nuance is the reason that we're here tonight. Many of you will recognise this individual as the star of a popular YouTube series named The Dictator. Hands up if you recognise him or you've seen him before. Only a few. How many of you watched YouTube? Hang on. This is like a user survey on the demographics of the uh, Dragon user. Hmm, interesting. Peter Mahoney is the senior vice president responsible for Dragon's uh, Dragon products in Nuance. He joined the company in 2004 and has led Nuance's global marketing efforts in addition to holding other senior roles in the company. Peter has a Bachelor of Science from Boston College with a double major in physics and computer science. He also has a passion for assistive technologies and is on the board of directors for Easter Seals, Massachusetts, an organization that provides services for ensuring that children and adults with disabilities have equal opportunities to live, learn, work, and play. Peter's unable to join us for tonight's event, but he has demonstrated his Australian credentials on previous occasions. He's kindly recorded the following message for us. On behalf of Nuance and the Dragon team, I'd like to welcome you all to Dragonology, our first Australian user group meeting. Dragon is used by millions of people and businesses to get work done every day. Our users are diverse, as evidenced by the community joining us tonight. This Dragonology audience includes lawyers, educators, medical professionals, business owners, government representatives, and more. For more than 15 years, Dragon has been helping busy people in the workforce to quickly and accurately create documents, dictate notes, file reports, capture client and customer documentation, transcribe audio, and more simply by using their voice. Dragon has also been widely adopted as an accessibility technology that has given people the ability to work and communicate, stay connected, and in some cases, fundamentally improve their quality of life. But today, the way people has worked has evolved. Because of this, Dragon has also evolved, as you recently witnessed, with important new releases for our Windows and Mac products, which are now able to connect to the cloud for the first time. These new products provide professionals with a personalized, voice-driven experience to quickly and accurately create documents, reports, emails, and more. With Dragon, improving your documentation productivity has never been easier. The Nuance Asia Pacific team has taken the initiative to launch Dragonology, and I have high hopes for the program in Australia and eventually in other parts of the world too. I'm looking forward to your feedback from this inaugural event to help us shape future forums. I encourage you to get involved, to give and take in the time-honored tradition of a true technology user group. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and I look forward to seeing you in person at the next Dragonology. We'll be doing our best to hold Peter to that and get him down for an event in the future. Um, I'm wearing two hats tonight, as some of you have realized. I'm the inaugural president of this august user group, self-appointed, so it's a little bit like a dictatorship at the moment, but we hopefully will change that soon. But my day job is with Nuance Communications, where I've been for over 10 years. I've always worked at the vanguard of personal productivity technology. I've not always been at the bleeding edge, but let's just say it's been useful to keep a packet of Band-Aids around. The times that I've been most excited about my job have been those when I've seen customers getting real benefits from the solutions that my company provided, whatever that might have been. With Dragon and Nuance, there's been no lack of those times. Um, I've seen people able to use computers for the first time because they could control them with their voice. I've heard how 
from many how Dragon has helped them avoid repetitive strain injury recurrences or help them keep working when they're recovering from, from a physical injury that stopped them from typing. typing. Um, the most excited I've seen people were a couple of speech therapists at a recent conference who were over the moon about how Dragon has helped some of their uh, students with dyslexic style symptoms get around some of the writing difficulties that they were having. These moments have been great. However, what I've also seen over the years has been the ingenuity with which customers have taken a tool made by a company like Nuance and bent it in directions that the maker wouldn't have even thought of. In the Nuance world, for example, there's a Sydney barrister who loves Macs, but he couldn't get what he needed from Dragon on the Mac at the time. So he runs Dragon in Microsoft Windows emulation on his Mac, uses the auto transcribe folder and Dropbox to get the transcription to his assistant's computer, also a Mac. Hands up if you knew what I just said. Uh, good, okay. The Dragon partner in New Zealand, this was amazing, that helped, helped a man who lost the use of his arms and legs in a car accident to control his physical environment using his voice. They hooked up his PC to relays that would control blinds and light switches and even turn on the radio and the television. And even, even more esoteric, there's an Australian telco consultancy that's cleverly uh, engineered the Dragon software development kit to pretend to be a person and to dial into legacy call centres. You know those ones where you had to press the numbers to go through the menus? Hideous things. There's still a few of them around. And it uses Dragon speech recognition just to document them. Because some of them are so old and so complicated that they can't actually work out what those menu trees are. Now, Nuance would never have ever thought of using Dragon for doing something like that. Um, we can't think of all the ways that people would use as software. And frankly, we'd be appalled by some of them too. <laughs> this is where a user group comes in. Simply, Dragonology exists so that people with similar interests can pool their knowledge share their experiences using Dragon from the real world and learn how to be more productive through that process. It's really that simple and Dragonology starts tonight. Now, I want to acknowledge some of the sponsors that we've had at the event. One of the good things about a traditional style user group is that there is bling from partners uh, who are interested in talking to you about business. Now, Nuance is obviously helping out a lot with the event tonight, but we have a whole ecosystem of people who would love to talk to you and would love to hear what you have to say back to them. Um, the companies you see on the screen at the moment have provided products and services that we'll be giving away in a lucky draw at the end of the night. And I encourage you to consider them when you next need to enhance your Dragon solution. Market One, Voice Recognition and VoiceX are Dragon value-added resellers, VARs, who can advise on all aspects of speech recognition setups. Olympus, you've certainly heard of. Their digital recorders and microphones are perfect for professional dictation and transcription with Dragon. Finally, Sennheiser is shaping the audio world of tomorrow, including the world of Dragon users with a range of wired and wireless headsets. Please welcome these companies' representatives here tonight and please clap to thank them for their support. Thank you very much. Now, I mentioned that this project has been a personal one for me, but it couldn't have happened without the support of Nuance. It's not always obvious why a user group would be to, of benefit to a large company like Nuance. I'd like to personally thank Nathan Taylor, who's over there somewhere, there he is, and Peter Mahoney, who you've seen it online, for getting it, for understanding and supporting this effort. We shall be worthy of their assistance. Now, the agenda tonight. We're going to start with a very interesting gentleman called Craig Rispin, and he's going to be talking about the future. No first, be first, profit first. Then we'll have a, an update on the state of the Dragon products. We've just announced a whole bunch of products in August, and I'll be giving you an overview with my Nuance hat on of where they fit in and where the future will be going with those particular products more specifically. We'll then have a panel discussion with the three of us up on stage. So that's me, Craig and Nathan from a business perspective who'll be able to fill you in on what's happening in Asia Pacific. And finally, we'll have the lucky draw at the end of the evening. I wanted to start the first session we had with a very big high level overview of what's going on. In future, we'll probably get more into things associated specifically with Dragon, but that's the plan for this evening. Uh, housekeeping, there are male toilets just outside here. I think the female toilets are down one, up one. Oh, up and down. One down, okay. Last time I was here, I was down there and I had to come up the stairs, so this is payback time. Good. Um, is there anything else we need to tell people about, Marty? No, we should have 
Yep, we'll, so it's going to be fairly short as well this evening. We're trying to keep it short and punchy. Uh, probably about a, no more than an hour of presentations, followed by drinks and networking and get to know your fellow people at the presentation. Onwards. Craig Rispin is a business futurist and innovation expert. He specialises in emerging businesses, people and technology trends and how companies can profit from them. Craig has over 20 years experience working where the future has been created with some of the most innovative companies in the world in IT, consumer electronics, internet and broadcasting industries. In fact, Craig got his start much earlier than that, teaching adults about technology and trends from the age of 10. We look forward to hearing about that, Craig. That should be interesting. He's addressed audiences of up to 3,000 people on five continents and has consulted with CEOs of leading companies worldwide. Some of his clients include BHP Billiton, Canon, Colonial First State, IBM, and many others. Now a keynote, keynote speaker, author, and innovation consultant, Craig is tonight going to share his insights into what the future holds for us. So please welcome Craig on stage, and he'll be with you quite soon. Hands up if you've met a futurist before. Have you met a futurist? You've met a futurist before? Who have you met? I don't remember. You don't remember? Do you know this is a real job? Do you think you can get employed with this title? Do you know there are many universities around the world where you get a degree in future studies? They've graduated here in Australia, over 900 students. All of them have jobs, 100% employment. About a third work in government and NGOs, about a third work in academia and research, and a third come from the commercial world. But we're all members of this peak body, the World Future Society. There's over 25,000 members worldwide. Whenever I talk to my clients, which are peak industry groups, major corporations, uh, standards of practice, regulators, they're all saying the same thing to me. Doesn't matter whether they're Sydney Airport or uh, cancer doctors or uh, agronomists. They're all saying the same thing. They call me up uh, usually the year before their annual conference and they say, Craig, we've got to have someone talk to us about the future because the president usually says, I've been in this industry for 30 years, but there's been more change in the last three years than in the last 30 years. And I know what you're going to say, Craig, because I've seen you out there. You're going to say it's only going to get faster, right? that the, the change is not just changing, it's accelerating change. And of course it is, and you all can feel it. You feel it in your guts. Here's your chance to discuss it with the person that's sitting next to you. Just discuss with them for 20 seconds, what has changed radically in your industry in just the last three years? You have 20 seconds to discuss. Your time begins now. And I bet as you were discussing that with your neighbor, some of what you were discussing, oh, there's probably a high prob uh, probability that it had something to do with technology. We've all been infected by it. It's invaded our lives. It's the very first thing that we touch in the morning. It's the very last thing that we touch at night. It's not our partner. What is it called? It has invaded our lives. And as you know, the technology industry mostly follows Moore's law, that the, that the price performance of technology will double every 8 to 12, uh, 24 months. But in the world of voice, just in the last 18 months, it's broken Moore's law. More on that in a bit. But the problem is most people think in a linear fashion. They only get one year older every year. Luckily, we don't go, I'm two, I'm four, I'm eight, I'm 16, I'm 32. That would not be a great life, would it? But this is the way that we think in a yearly fashion. But that's not the way that the world is going right now. And if you look at the major trends that are impacting, like I do in my practice, business, how business is changing, new business models are emerging that never existed before. People are changing. Their relationship with technology is changing and technology and people, we're about to enter a time where technology and people are going to integrate. And 40 year, the next 40 year cycle, we're going to see a radical shift in the health and well-being of humankind. Now, I won't have a lot of time to discuss all the trends that are impacting every industry, but I thought I'd uh, touch on just a few. 
And the way to do this in an accelerated fashion, because I've only got a few minutes, is this fantastic video called, Did You Know? Put your hands up if you've seen the video, Did You Know? Really? Only one? Now I'm obliged to play it. So here it is, the latest Did You Know? And it's called, Did You Know in 2028? The reason they, the, my futurist colleagues chose this year is, if you've got kids that are entering school this year, they will be graduating in 2028 and heading off to university. So this video, in just a minute and 16 seconds, condenses the major shifts in society, technology, and business. And at the end of it, I'm going to ask you to turn to your, uh, to your learning partner and ask them, what was the most surprising thing they saw in the video? Are you really ready for some accelerated learning? Let's begin. The fraternal twins, peril and opportunity. Never before in the history of mankind could an individual do what a company used to do. Never before in the history of mankind could companies do what countries used to do. We're living in a time of incredible opportunity and massive peril if you don't keep up. What was the most surprising thing you saw in the video? You have 30 seconds to discuss with your neighbor. Your time begins now. Did you think that we were going to be able to store the entire contents of the internet on DNA? Do you know a single gram of a common household bacteria, E. coli, can hold many petabytes worth of information if you encode it in their DNA? And Chinese researchers have already developed this. They say in the future, if you want to work in the IT industry, you'll have to have a degree in biology. biology as well. We're really living in a time of exponential change. You can see it. We're living in a world where iPhones are twice the value of oil. Did you know that Apple Computer is twice the size by market cap of Exxon Mobil? There are, there are people, I know it was just in Auckland just yesterday, well, this morning actually, and uh, I had a CEO there tell me they cannot get their 19-year-old to get a driver's license. They just won't do it. They just go Uber everywhere, and they know. They say, Dad, I know in five years' time there'll be driverless cars. What do I need a license for? They know that this is coming. And think about this. Just yesterday morning, 
another company became a unicorn. A billion dollar startup not yet listed on the stock exchange. There are now 127 startups. Uh, this slide shows the rapid growth from Wall Street Journal just from February of uh, 2014. It was 58, then 59, then 60, 65, and not just a billion, 10 billion, and then 30 billion, and then 50 billion. And then uh, just on Monday, it looks like Uber got another billion dollar investment. They're going to be a $65 billion company. And as you go down the list and you see these businesses, what they're doing is they're tying themselves to exponential technology, new computer human interfaces, sensors and networks to empower their organizations to grow at an, ex at an extraordinary rate, where two individuals Two laptops and a broadband connection can create a $52 billion value in less than five years. Incredible opportunity. But it's, it's disrupting every industry when it comes to transport. Uber's the largest transport company, and they don't have any taxis. I work with the International Hotel Group. Every time that somebody stays at Airbnb, they're not staying at an International Hotel Group. They're the biggest accommodation provider in the world. There are 40,000 Australians who rent out spare rooms or entire homes and make at least a part-time or full-time living on Airbnb today. Facebook is the world's largest media company. Thank you for pro providing all that media for free for them. <laughs> and Alibaba is the world's largest retailer that has no warehouses and they have no shop fronts. We live in an incredible time. And in the last few minutes that I have with you, this is just the start of the conversation. You know my slide pack has 479 slides? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to cover them all in the last two minutes. But let's just talk about this one area that's rapidly changing and the reason why. I know that there are many people in the legal industry here this evening. And, and just a couple days ago, I got an email, and I knew one of the major law firms that I advise had been hacked. In fact, I and all the rest of their customers were ringing them saying, your email account has been hacked. Just in the interest of uh, October Cybersecurity Awareness Month, <laughs> um, please hire a hacker to hack you before you get hacked. And one of the best ways to, to, to secure your communication on top of a fingerprint is your voice. For a copy of my book, can anybody rem remember the name of the movie and the year of the movie with this scene? I, my name is Warner Brands. My voice is my passport verified. First hand up. Sneakers and the year was? 92, congratulations. Come and get the book, come and get the book. Can you pass that to her? Come and get the book, she's got it here. Well done, got it in one, what a geek. <laughs> Even MasterCard is turning to nuanced technology to enable your credit cards to have voice recognition verification as well as PIN in the future. And if you want to know where the future is going to go, you just have to look at the Internet of Things. There will soon be three billion extra connected devices to networks that all have microphones built into them. But many of them will not even have keyboards or screens. How will we interact with them? It's quite obvious, isn't it? There are apps now that have both fingerprint and voice verification, two levels of biosensors built into them. And consumers are flocking to this because their bank accounts are getting hacked every week. Not when you put in this kind of security. If you want to know more about that, speak to one of the nuanced people. But what you need to know is, if you haven't upgraded to the latest version of voice recognition software, it is nothing like last year's version. Look at this quote from an industry expert. In the past 18 months, commercial speech recognition technologies has seen a dramatic 30% improvement. To put that in perspective, that's a bigger gain in performance than we've seen in the previous 15 years combined. Here's the graph of the growth. That's more than Moore's Law, by the way. <laughs> it's four times Moore's Law. It's incredible. And if you haven't upgraded to the latest version or deployed 
cloud-based uh, technology, how can you possibly compete in the modern world? Look, I'm going to have to leave it here, but would you like to know what comes after that? <laughs> so one of my mentors, teachers, is Ray Kurzweil. He's a head of engineering and one of the founders of the company that um, Nuance merged with. He was a, he's an expert in computer human interface, and he's been right most of the time for the la in his career for the last 40 years. He made a prediction just a, a few days ago that nanobots, we will inhale them. They will go into our bloodstream, monitor our health 24-7, and report back to our doctor so we don't have to go into the emergency room, tell us when we need to turn up. It will also amplify our intelligence by a billion times. Now you're laughing. <laughs> but he's been right for 40 years, and that's why Google put him in charge of engineering. So last question for you. Are you an upgrade to the latest version of the software? And will you take the Google Brain upgrade when it comes out? You have five seconds to discuss. Your time begins now. <laughs> Guys, really, that's the start of the conversation. I'd love to continue the conversation uh, over uh, drinks. We're also going to have a panel in a little bit. Think of what the one question you'd like to ask a futurist before you leave uh, tonight. I think I'll need to leave it there. Sorry? Oh, no, uh, that's not my area of expertise you to someone that is in that area. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Craig. That was a fantastic. And we will, as he said, have a chance to uh, ask some more questions and have a bit of discussion later on. Um, I'm now going to put on my nuance hat. So you can see me transform from the inaugural president of the Dragonology into something associated with nuance. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to give you an overview of nuance's latest Dragon products and hopefully give you an idea of where our technology is headed. Let's start by reviewing where speech recognition is overall. Has anyone seen this chart before? Oh, we're having a good night here. One at the back, that's good. This is called the Gartner Hype Cycle for Emerging Technologies. Every year around August, Gartner Consulting Group publishes its Hype Cycle for Emerging Technologies. The hype cycle is designed to help organizations work out what technologies they can invest in for adopting and, and getting benefit from in their organizations. And Gartner suggests that new technologies often follow the same hype pattern. Initially, there's a great deal of excitement about new technologies like sniffing nanobots up your nose. And I will look at that in a minute, actually, because I think it's on the next one. And after a little while, there's a realization that technology won't solve the world's problems. Sorry, hoverboards aren't going to fix George Street. And there's this trough of disillusionment where everyone goes, oh my god, it's never going to get better. You can remember, oh my god, mobile computing, it's never going to get better. The internet, it's never going to catch on. I wish I had a dollar for everyone who'd said that to me. Um, and at that point, the technology tends to be dismissed or downplayed or, you know, it's not going to catch on. However, for some lucky technologies that don't fall down the bottom of the trough of um, disillusionment, there's progression up the slope of enlightenment towards the guru. And this is, happens as successful applications start to be deployed. You get proof of concepts coming out that other people want to copy. And finally, a technology may reach the plateau of productivity where mainstream use of it is feasible and organizations can expect strong returns on investment. In 2013, two years ago, speech recognition was on the edge of the plateau. Uh, last year, in the 24 hype cycle, which you see on the screen at the moment, it was well and truly on the plateau. What do you think might have happened this year? Sorry? Cloud. Cloud. It's disappeared. It's vanished. The hype is over for speech recognition. It hasn't gone out the bottom of the plug down the barrel. Um, the hype is over. Basically, speech rec recognition has moved off the hype cycle. It's not because it's vanished as a relevant technology. It's because Gartner no longer thinks it's hype. Now, those of you who've been saving time and money for 10 or 15 years or more using Dragon for doing your documentation, or just using Dragon to improve your access to IT and control your computer, this isn't news. But for those who still say, I tried Dragon once in 1999 and it didn't work for me, 
those people need to try Dragon again. And in fact, we're going to make a video on that soon called Mythbusters to actually show people saying this and then showing their realization that it actually works for them now. And I just, I do want to look at the chart because we've got other things coming in now that are more artificial intelligence. So we've got natural language question answering. We've got machine learning. We've got speech to speech translation. Some of the things that Craig mentioned in his presentation and the one I'm really looking for because I love, I love the way Mr. Kurzweil takes, or Dr. Kurzweil takes credit for everything. Where is it? Smart dust, yes, smart dust. There we are, innovation trigger at the bottom there. So smart dust is coming up the um, innovation trigger and will soon hit the peak of inflate, inflated expectations and hopefully it will live on and we'll all be sniffing nanobots up our noses next time we come to the bar. I do want to take just one slide out tonight to reaffirm the importance of Dragon for personal empowerment. I don't want anyone to think that, I'm going to focus on business basically after this, and I don't want anyone to think that it, this area isn't important given uh, what I'm going to talk about the rest of the, of the night. Peter Mahoney gave a great talk last year about what accessibility means. His very personal talk was called, it took me 50 years to understand accessibility. If you can find, you can Google his slides on the web if you want to see them. Now, Nuance Communications is a large company. Our market cap this morning was more than five billion US dollars. We have more, we have around, I'm not sure what the number is today, we have about 14,000 people around the world. Last financial year, our revenue was about two billion US dollars. You may not have realized that Dragon isn't our own, only product. But at the core of our company is reinventing the relationship between people and technology. That's what it's about. We've spent billions of dollars making voice recognition more accurate. And that first chart there, it's not quite as exciting. I, mean, I need to update it for the last few months because obviously a lot's been happening uh, in terms of improvement. But in the early days, the computers weren't fast enough to do neural networks. Nuance had to focus on hidden Markov models, which are a statistical form of technique. Now that computers have cycles to bear, we can start overlaying other technologies on top of that, like neural networks, and getting speech recognition even more accurate. And this helps everybody because the worst thing you can say about a speech recognition system is that it isn't accurate. The other side of the uh, equation is that we've made tools that allow a 12 year old, not just any 12 year old to be fair, there's a rather special one on the screen, to build a handwriting to speech app. Um, Dragon's heart comes out of this ethos. This is one of the main reasons Dragon was conceived in the, in the beginning. And it's one of the reasons that many of us are working at Nuance. Dragon and the new flourishing technologies that are blooming around it, some of the ones I just pointed to, continue to change the world. Technology is about giving people more choices and helping each reach his or her potential. The movement to give pe people better access to technology has, I'm pleased to say, become much bigger than Dragon, and always has been, to be honest, but Dragon continues to play its part. Now, we move on to the documentation challenge. So we've been talking about speech recognition very generally, um, but those of you that have been around for a long time will know that speech recognition in the old, what was the ad, oils ain't oils? What was that for? Great ad, it's up there with more teen. So like oils ain't oils, speech recognition isn't speech recognition. There are different forms of speech recognition. And now that it's available on everything from your phone to your car to your fridge, it's important to be a discriminating speech recognition purchaser. Dragon software is a productivity tool. And the key word about it, the key thing about it is that it's personal to you and your work and your organization. Dragon is for making you and your organization more efficient at document creation. Often the documentation requirements in organizations are overwhelming. We have social workers, police, other case management professionals spending a large proportion of their time reporting on what they've done, meaning they're doing less of what they're supposed to be doing. And I've already spoken to someone at the beginning of the session tonight who's in exactly that situation, working for an NGO. The staff are spending a lot of their time documenting what's going on rather than actually doing it. This takes time away from client service delivery and also impacts job satisfaction. Nuance is now focused on driving our customers' core businesses with Dragon products and services that free up people to focus on high value, more satisfying tasks, the job gets better, reduce the risk of non-compliance and make compliance easier to meet, and finally, improve business processes by doing all the things that 
documentation slows down, reducing the cost of doing documentation, increasing the service quality and customer satisfaction by getting the, the documentation done at the time when it's fresh in people's minds and quickly so that it's usable straight away and doesn't take up an inordinate amount of time. The other thing that's now in the equation, of course, is that most people are using mobile devices for work purposes. And any documentation productivity tool now has to have a mobile component. These US figures indicate that 90% of lawyers use their smartphones for work tasks out of the office. And almost every social worker thinks that mobile technology will help them do their jobs. Anyone that's working in those sorts of jobs, the one, the one that I experienced was in healthcare. Uh, in the early days when I was working with a part of Apple here that was working on the good old Newton, a product ahead of its time. Healthcare workers would go out into the field, they'd visit patients at home. The medical records were in the home, but in one case, a cockatoo had eaten them. And the, and the medical worker has to then drive back to the hospital to get the copy of the records, which may not have been up to date. Having these sort of technology working for those kinds of workers makes a huge difference to their productivity, as you can imagine. In August 2015, that's not so long ago, really, is not But we're in the future now, so we have to keep track of things. Nuanced announced new professional products for the desktop and the cloud. Note that we've changed the naming of the products. So we no longer have a dragon naturally speaking for Windows and a dragon dictate for Mac. We've got one dragon to rule them all, as it were. So even while there are blends of difference in the, between the products on the two platforms, they're both called dragon now. Second. Um, Dragon Professional becomes two products. It's become Dragon Professional Individual and Dragon Professional Group. Dragon Professional Individual, how many of you have upgraded already? Hands up. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It's now available and Dragon Professional will be available soon. I'll talk more about these later. The most exciting announcement was a new product called Dragon Anywhere. This is a mobile app for Apple iOS and Android devices. And tonight I'm going to spend some time giving you an overview of Dragon Anywhere. And if the demo gods are smiling upon us, Telstra, please work. Um, we'll give you a demonstration of the beta of Dragon Anywhere as well. First, a couple of uh, pieces of information about the Windows and Mac products, because these are key to all of our uh, activities at work and getting things done. Dragon Professional Individual, DPI for short, is a new more affordable edition of Dragon for professional users, and it's integrated with Dragon Anywhere. If you were already a professional user, hands up if you're a professional user. Excellent, thank you. You'll have noticed that the user interface and online help have been further improved. You can more easily create auto text custom commands, and there's an improved transcription workflow that makes it so much easier to transcribe recorded audio. Um, it's now possible to transcribe even another speaker's voice, a, still a single speaker, everyone, without having that person train the software. So imagine you get a recording of uh, Malcolm Turnbull delivering a speech, you put that on your computer, you tell Dragon to transcribe it, you correct the first 60 seconds or so of the speech, and then you get a transcript of that speech. Um, so myriad of uses for this sort of technology. <coughs> Premium users who have upgraded to DPI, individual product, have noticed the advanced command customization that professional users have always used, the ability to set up voice commands, quite sophisticated ones. Premium upgraders can now also use the auto transcribe folder agent. Hands up if you use the auto transcribe folder agent. Oh, a secret. OK, good. Whereby audio can be dropped into a folder and automatically processed by Dragon. Finally, the ability to manage vocabularies more effectively and to import and export custom commands have made premium users' lives a lot easier. Are there any Mac users here tonight? Excellent. Increasing as always. Dragon for Mac, effectively version 5 of the software, is now available and is also integrated with Dragon Anywhere. So you've got both the desktop products, the new desktop products, integrated with the cloud. Dragon for Mac offers the latest speech recognition accuracy. It uses the same speech recognition engine as the Windows version. The, most, the list is up there of things that have been added. The most important one for me, though, is support for Word 2016 with full text control of editing in the Microsoft environment there. Uh, the second most important thing for me is that the user interface has been revamped as well, so that instead of being an app that gets in your face, it lives up there on the menu bar and is unobtrusive and easy to access. 
I've already had complaints that they, people liked it better as an app. I guess it's, it's no pleasing anyone. Has, how many of you have got the latest version? Who likes it? Hands, keep your hands up if you like it better. Put your hands up if you like it worse. I like uh, it better, but the mic doesn't work. Okay. The mic doesn't work. That must be fixable. Shouldn't have stopped it. Well, it worked fantastic for two weeks. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And suddenly the mic doesn't work. It works fine for everywhere else. The lady's got the same problem. Ah, OK. Let's talk about that afterwards, and we'll see if we can fix it for you. Now, on to Dragon Anywhere. This is the new product for the evening. Dragon Anywhere is professional grade cloud-based dictation. You can use your mobile device to dictate and edit documents of any length using your voice. Unlike the built-in speech recognition that comes with mobile devices, Android Anywhere, uh, Dragon Anywhere lets you talk for as long as you like, and it's personal to you and your writing, tuning itself to your voice over time. Even better, the words and the commands that you add with Dragon Anywhere are also available on your desktop Dragon. Note that availability of Dragon Anywhere in Australia hasn't been announced yet. Um, I was hoping to have some news for you tonight, but I haven't. But we hope to have some information for you about that, uh, for you about that soon. Now, as I said, Dragon Anywhere is personal. Dragon is personal. Dragon Anywhere allows you to enter custom words for your area of specialty as well as people's names, proper nouns, and so on. You can add words to the vocabulary at any time. You can also save time by storing and then easily inserting pieces of text that you use a lot. These are called auto texts. An auto text could be something as simple as your sign off in a letter. It could be a set of standard items that you provide as part of a quotation or part of a checklist. It could be a standard clause in a legal document. It can even be a custom form that you fill out, for example, an inspection report for a, a property that a builder is looking at to fix the roof. Now, the word lists and the auto text synchronize with your desktop. You can set up word lists and auto text from your mobile device or from your desktop. It doesn't matter. Your personalizations will be shared across your devices, both mobile and desktop, be they Windows, Mac, Android, or Apple. Now, let me show you how Dragon Anywhere works. For the purposes of tonight, I'm using a UK accent profile. So this isn't optimized for Australian speakers. It doesn't have Australian uh, language. And the servers that I'm using are in the United States rather than in Australia, which we think we'll probably need for a good solution here. So the recognition is not as accurate as it would be for an Australian deployment. And the latency is also much longer. I have with me my trusty iPhone. Now, as you can see, Dragon Anywhere is in the top left of the screen. Can everybody see that through the pillars? Hopefully. I tap on it to launch the application. It shows me a list of documents that, are on the that I've already recorded here. And I can do the usual thing here of deleting them, sharing them, emailing. Tapping on the sidebar control over here, I get a list of menus that I can use to control the application. So you've got dictation, which gives you a dictation window. You've got documents, which gives you your document list. This is where we see how fast the connection we've got. Auto texts, we'll just sit here and see if the network can catch up with us. If it shows us this in under 10 seconds, I'll show you the next bit, otherwise I'll keep going. This is going back to the server and having a little chat on Boston and then coming back, retrieving the auto texts. Yeah, so basically you can store things in there and then have them conjured out. You add them by tapping the plus key and that lets you put in a spoken form and a written key. So it's a very, uh, straightforward version of what you can already do, for example, in Dragon Professional, but made much more usable and easy to use. Once you've got it up and going, you can go back to the dictation window. Now, basically, I can just sit here, turn the microphone on by tapping on the button, as you saw, full stop, new paragraph. Everything I say will be sent into the cloud and then come back to me, hopefully fairly accurately spelt. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. I turned off the mic. You notice it keeps going. Select Philly, delete that, go to end, full stop, new paragraph, insert my address, new paragraph. That's actually where we are, of course, full stop. I can also insert a form and fill that out on the screen, full stop, new paragraph. Let's pretend I'm a Dragon salesperson and I'm taking inquiries at a show, full stop. 
new paragraph. Insert Dragon Inquiry. That's the wrong command, so that won't work. Oh, it did work. Amazing. Delete that. Select all. Delete that. Dragon Inquiry. Bruce Smith. Next input field. 02915329112. Next field. He wants to use Dragon to replace 20,000 laptops being used by field force social workers, full stop. We are very happy to help him, full stop, new paragraph. Once you've entered the text that you want to enter, comma, you can then send it somewhere, full stop, microphone off. And tapping on the button up the top, you can say mail the document. You can do that as a voice command, but just for, I'll show you briefly what you can do there. You can email the document. You can email it as an attachment. You can share it using Apple's normal options there. And you can save it to Evernote. Are there any Evernote users in the audience? OK, fantastic. Sharing the document um, brings up the normal Apple sharing menu, which basically plugs into all the apps that are built into the operating system there that have the hooks in for sending it, including Dropbox. Are there any Dropbox users? Many more, yes, go Dropbox, OK. So that's Dragon Anywhere in a nutshell. What do you think? Thumbs up? Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. So availability to be determined. Keep in mind that latency is because we're talking to the US, so it's, it's coming from a long, long way away at the moment. Um, Bear with me for one second. I seem to have changed into a template mode here. Uh, slide only. So the caveat there applies, um, as, and as I said, we can share the document via email, save it to Evernote, or use it, in this case, with the iOS share menu to send to other places. Now, next off the rank, coming soon, is Dragon Professional Group. We like to call it DPG. Along with Dragon Anywhere, DPG is a key component for building enterprise solutions for larger organizations. Is anyone here from what they would call a larger organization? Hands up. What are you, is anyone here a very small person in a larger organization? <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. There we go. We aim to deliver, deliver a solution uh, to that documentation overload problem that scales to the larger sizes that larger organizations required. Note that planning, um, training are part of this solution. And you can also see, maybe you can't see in the blue there, something that says the Nuance User Management Center. Now, if I was having a quiz after this session, I'd ask you what DPI and DPG means. Would you like to guess what NUMC means? N-U-M-C. Nuance User Management Center. The NUMC provides an efficient, centralized management service for Dragon Enterprise. It helps an organization set up user accounts and their profiles, and then manage the use of Dragon as it evolves in the organization. Importantly, it makes sure that customers get a return on their investment because it allows them to track how many people are using Dragon and how much they are using it. So we've got Laura and Craig are here tonight, our, uh, some of our corporate people, and they talk with government departments who've been buying Dragon for just as long as you guys have. And it's all over, say, federal government departments who don't necessarily know where all their licenses are. And when somebody leaves the organization that's been using Dragon or they got Dragon to help with an injury that they've got over and now they prefer to go back to their spreadsheet using a mouse, the organization doesn't know that it's got that license. So this NUMC addresses the requirement to help those organizations keep track of their licenses and manage them. Uh, it also lets you allocate licenses so that you know when you need more, et cetera, et cetera. So in conclusion, I've given you an overview of where we are at the moment. And I think some of the strategic directions of this, uh, these changes are pretty obvious. Obviously, we, can't, we don't necessarily have product announcements today. But I think the strategy is clear of the desktop and the cloud fitting together. 
the desktop is not going away. It's staying here. It's a heavy duty workplace. It's the truck, as Steve Jobs said, where we do real work. I, sorry, I didn't say real work. Mobile users do real work too. The people who write documents and desks really need big screens, decent keyboards, and an environment where they can do powerful work. But nowadays we can be on the road, we can be in a home, in a coffee shop, with only a mobile device, and we are able to do effective and efficient work. Dragon is the documentation productivity solution for everyone who has a lot of documentation in their lives. That's what its purpose is. It's not for people who can satisfy their document requirements by using Siri and sending text messages a few times a day. That's not what Dragon is for. We've always said that talking is faster than typing. Using Dragon allows you to save time so that you can focus on the things that really matter on your customers, on your clients, on growing your business, and on enhancing your own and employees' productivity. With Dragon, your voice is ready for work. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can we get more specific in terms of what you've seen tonight? Do you think Dragon Anywhere has a, a place in that world of 28, 2028? Yes, it has a place on my home screen. It's, there's a gap there waiting. Can't wait to get it. but it's connecting to infinite computing. It has to be in the cloud these days. You know, we all live in the cloud, and you can connect it to all these cloud services like we've seen Dropbox, but it's all, those are the simple consumer apps. There are much more powerful apps uh, for corporations now. And I see it's so important for people, you know, you've talked about field workers and social workers, uh, but also just think about the, the sales force who uh, the, the latest statistics are spending less than 35% of their time with clients because they're doing all this sales documentation, sales reports. Mm. So there's a huge opportunity. And all those reps, for instance, they're all living in the cloud, living on their mobile devices. Um, uh, I can't wait. I keep on looking, update, update, but it's not there how, yet. <laughs> how would it help you personally, something like Dragon Anywhere? How would you use it? Well. I have to reveal to you that I actually uh, have a learning disability. Mm -hmm. So it causes me great stress to have a blank page and a keyboard. Okay. But obviously, you hand me a mic and I can speak for hours. <laughs> so for me, it's uh, changed my career completely. Um, it's allowed me for decades to be able to communicate in written form when I would avoid it at all cost. And uh, I wrote my a book, How to Think Like a Futurist, um, all with Dragon. And uh, I met another uh, author today, that, uh, and he pulled out his book from a few years ago. And he, wrote, he also wrote his entire book by voice. So for people that have, like me, that have some, uh, you know, a, it's a minor disability, but it causes me great stress. It's been a, really a career enabler for me. Oh, fantastic. And you didn't tell us how did you um, how did you help people when you were ten years old to come oh. up with this technology? <laughs> so, um, I met Steve Wozniak when I was ten, and I bought a, a Apple One. They didn't call it the Apple One, but it was a, an Apple Kit, and uh, taught myself basic. And a few months later, I met some business owners that wanted to learn this programming language called Basic. Remember Basic? I do. And they offered me a dollar an hour to teach them how to program BASIC, because no one else really knew. Uh, luckily, I can say I charge slightly more than a dollar an hour. Sad to hear. <laughs> Thank you very much, Craig. It depends how long it took him to train them, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. If he found a way to scale it as well, that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have any questions from the audience? There's one at the front here. Oh, I'm sorry. This is to Eric. Uh, I was, when you made that presentation, one of the things that you said about 2028, which is only 15 odd years away, 50% of the workforce will be out of work. Or oh, sorry, the technology will replace 50% of the workforce. What happens to that 50%? And are we all going to be working a three day week at that in, in 2028? Uh, probably not. The good news is it's not going, so technology is transforming jobs worldwide. The many jobs are being eliminated, and new ones are rising up to replace them. Uh, I have a colleague, his name is Thomas Frey, and he blogs about this. Uh, that's F-R-E-Y on, uh, on the World Future Society. He talks about the billion jobs that will be eliminated and the two billion jobs that will be created. The good news is that you should hear 
This is already happening, and at the same time, did you know there are, there are more people employed now in history than ever before? Um, not necessarily on a full-time basis, but there are two billion people now that have a job that didn't have a job 25 years ago. I mean, that's a big difference in the world. Do we have another question? Up the back there. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm over here. Oh. You can't see me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is, um, can we trust the iCloud? And as my uh, friend here indicates, um, uh, it gives us it gives the hackers one target. Mm. Uh, can we trust it? So the question is, can we trust trust the cloud? Uh, you, I speak at the biggest uh, security conferences in the world, and I can tell you right now that you are twice as likely to be hacked with on-premises servers than if they're in the cloud. And as the past. IT manager for NAB said, before he joined Amazon, I'll point out, <laughs> he said, um, well, this year Amazon will spend $32 billion on cloud security, and NAB cannot. Hmm. So that's why we're moving all of our customer-facing apps into the cloud, because it's much more secure than we could do on our own servers. You are twice as much more likely to be hacked, your email, if you have say, an email server on-premise. Hmm. Uh, Mia, Mike, Mike, Phil, Connor, my question was pretty much the same line. It was about um, how the vocabularies, for example, go back to nuance, um, how they're stored and what sort of security there is there. Like, I guess it's sort of cloud-based also, but I just wonder, when we send it back, going in that circle, just how vulnerable that information is. Clearly, the security of the information is very important, particularly for many Dragon customers. And it's something that we're, that's why we're keen to have a server in Australia, for example, because that's a requirement of many, many organisations here. They must have that. They don't want their data sent off, off out of the country at any point. So those are all issues we're very aware of, and um, I, I guess we're addressing them as best as we can. I'm pretty sure... Um, and forgive me because it's early days for this product, it's still beta. There is a privacy statement for the US which I have glanced at very quickly and I do think I remember reading something about end-to-end -end encryption on the information that's sent backwards and forwards. You've still got the issue of it being stored somewhere. Um, I'm not actually sure we store those word lists or auto text in the cloud because they're actually stored on the individual device. So they may well be transferred to the device by the cloud or synchronised, but don't hold me to that. We'll come back to you again when we launch you with a more comprehensive answer. Yeah, I was, I was going to say it's a very, very um, important subject, especially if you look at the types of customers that we have. Uh, from a Dragon Anywhere perspective, I think we'll see some huge applications in government, some huge applications in legal and medical, and they're all very sensitive areas. And, you know, Derek's talked about encryption. I know that there's a lot of plans for encryption. Um, also, too, we need to be very careful with what we do with the information that we have or is uh, with us for a short period of time. And I know that we're working on a series of uh, documents that when we do release the product will explain what we've done from a security perspective, what legislative requirements we meet and uh, what happens to your data. And one of the things that's near and dear to my heart, especially too for some of the requirements from a government perspective here in Australia, is to make sure we're working with a secure local data centre so that we can work with some high-end and high-sensitive applications that wouldn't allow uh, this kind of data to be sent overseas. You should also know that if you're using a cellular connection rather than Wi-Fi, it's encrypted to the cell tower anyway. You have double the, the security if you're on a mobile device and using cellular data than if you're using, say, public Wi-Fi. And over here. Hi. Um, how will Dragonology keep us updated with what's happening? Sorry, um, say that again. I didn't quite How will Dragonology question. keep us all updated with what's happening? Oh, good question. Great question. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so what, I, what I'm planning to do after this, so we're, we're just launching tonight. All of you that registered for the evening tonight, those of you that came, those of the people that registered, those that are watching uh, because they will have received an email about the uh, recording that we're making tonight, 
you'll receive details of how to sign up officially. So there's some formal bits we have to jump through. We, we, we are setting it up as a proper organisation. So I'll send you an email and uh, ask you to sign up. And then after that, it's really going to be, I hope, member-led. So we'll be doing what people want it to do. It's not what Nuance wants it to do. It's what people here want it to do, people out there that are joining the organisation want it to do. So um, you can make that happen yourself. From my perspective, we're seeing Nuance playing a, playing a role in Dragonology uh, on a couple of fronts. One is to listen to what our users are looking for in terms of product innovation and use. Um, the other is to help support these types of events. And uh, finally, it's also too to provide uh, our users with updates on what we're doing from a roadmap perspective and where we're taking our technology. Yep, exactly. One here. Thank you very much. Uh, John Bynum, I've used uh, Dragon since well, probably 12, 15 years. <clears throat> no complaints. I've got seven books on Amazon. Uh, they've not all been done through Dragon, but certainly a major percentage of all of them has been. And I uh, upgraded to the last one on the, on the first day, which was the, the 1st of October. And I, as a test, I did a transcription and I read uh, one article in the Sydney Morning Herald, transcribed it, and it had 100% accuracy. I was just absolutely amazed. I thought this is the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, certainly far superior to the previous, uh, uh, the previous products by, by a long shot, I've got to say. So I was really happy. So I, I, I used it uh, about three or four times, no problems at all, and then suddenly the mic didn't work. So I did to, went to preferences, I did all the normal things that a, a, on a computer one would do, nothing would help. So I thought, oh, there's an upgrade. Maybe I should upgrade, but Mac has gone to El Capitan, so I don't know whether that was a good thing or not, but I upgraded, I spent another $50 American, 75 Australian, so it's, it's cost me about $180 so far, and unfortunately the mic didn't work there either. <clears throat> so I thought, oh, okay, uh, let's do the next best thing. We'll uninstall the whole program and do a, from the download, I'll download the program again. Still didn't work. So now I've gone back to Dictate, Dragon Dictate 4.4. Now, this long way of saying brings me to the question. I, I sent off an email, this is now, and this lady here, by the way, has also got a problem with the mic. It's probably the and, and, uh, and I sent an email off to support uh, at least a week and a half ago, I haven't heard, I haven't heard uh, any, anything back from them. It's early days because of the new product. Uh, so my question is, how do I get local nuance Dragon Dictate support so to fix up my problem? Because so the way, the way to get local support, and I was going to mention this at the end, but thank you for bringing that up. We work in Australia with a network of value-added resellers. So the first thing, if you want full support, if you want a professional solution that covers not just the software, but also gets you the right hardware in terms of what Olympus and um, Sennheiser might have, etc., then talk to the VARs and they'll be happy to support you through some arrangement. If you just have a problem that you can't work out, the best way to get onto support is to call them. We have an Australian 1-800 uh, number. Go to australia.nuance.com forward slash support Click on Dragon and down the bottom of that page is a phone number you can call for technical support. Please call them. Email, I, I think, I'm not sure is the best way of uh, getting to the tech support guys, but you can call them. And if you've got issues, please let us know and we'll follow up. Do you, do you want to add something on that, Nathan? So, so the telephone number that Derek's referring to is an Australian number. And what I would do is definitely give it a call and escalate the problem because uh, I'm not sure what's happened to your email. I'm sorry about that. And uh, if you can't get any further with that, then you can come to Derek and I. Mm -hmm. So I, I, can we, I, I'd really love the talk not to get bogged down in, um, in bugs and f problems tonight. I think we can save that for future events. I was going to say that, Derek, let's put the number up at the end. Yeah, we'll put the number up at the end. I'll, I'll get it up on the screen later on. Is there a non-problem related question? <laughs> there's, there's one, oh, well, one here, first of all, then here and here. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Morby. Um, which Dragon product allows you to save a recording on your device and then use Dragon to 
um, to transcribe it, and what format must that recording be in? Ah. So uh, are you on Windows or Mac? Windows. Okay, so on Windows you need Dragon Premium or above. And uh, how you do the recording is up to you. You can use a recorder from Olympus, or for example, you could use um, a, an app on your smartphone. You could use any sufficiently high quality digital recorder. Once you've got the audio on your, on your machine, um, the, the newest software, it does exactly what I said in the, in the presentation. You correct the first minute and you're off and going. Um, sorry, no, there's one here. I've got a mic, so maybe I oh. should go. Yep, we've, got, we've got two people with mics, but you first. <laughs> Ladies garbage. first. Um, uh, uh, the price of the, uh, the product, that's one thing. Right. You don't have to tell me how much it costs right now, but I'm interested in how, if you want to upgrade, whether you have to start from the bottom and just pay it right, or, or, or there's some advantage in uh, having bought an earlier one that you get the sure. next. Sure. So is, can you upgrade from existing products? So yeah. there's, a, there's a general... Uh, no. Can you upgrade without paying a huge penalty and having to start as if it's a new product? So there is upgrade pricing for the, usually the last two versions of our products. Right. So if, you've, if we're on version 13, for example, if you've got 11 or 12, there's an upgrade pricing. The other thing is if you uh, sign up to receive special offers from us, whenever the product is, a new product is launched, there is almost always a launch offer as well, which is even cheaper. So that's, that's the way to find out about special pricing. Um, sorry, there's a gentleman right behind. Yes, thank you. Uh, a question about the future of Dragonology, really. Yes. Uh, I teach Asian students, uh, and they speak in funny voices. Uh, and I've had some success in getting them uh, to read a script, watch the screen, and see the mistakes they're making. And, and some of these are simple, like Japanese st students say dogger instead of dog, but yeah. they don't know they're doing ah. And you have to <laughs> <laughs> um, But once they get the hang of it, uh, uh, they discover there's about 20 mistakes they can possibly make, or frequently make. And if you eliminate them, they're speaking quite good Australian. Yes. Um, it's, it's kind of like speech recognition in reverse. Yeah, yeah. And um, there are very, very large numbers of English learners still, until we get Ch and Chinese learners now up north yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, kids who finish primary school or even preschool in Taiwan, for example, and then go to English school for a couple of hours. So um, there's a huge need out there. The drag and focus at the moment isn't on that requirement, unfortunately. I think we've got other, other foci, if you like, that we're working on. But it's, there are some companies working on that area. Um, from everything from just correcting um, the pronunciation. And there's a, one, one guy, uh, one researcher, has modelled the human throat and the mouth and the lips and the larynx and has an artificial mouth that can actually pronounce the, uh, the syllables correctly as well. So I, I acknowledge the need. It's probably not a focus for us at the moment, unfortunately. If one of my kids wants to use my dragon, may, are they allowed to and would it work? Say it was a boy. Um, yes, they are allowed to, depending on the licence. I think the latest licence is... Uh... I was going to say, if you've got a Dragon Home or Premium licence, it's licensed for as many speakers in your house as you like. Um, if you're working for a business and you've got a Dragon Professional or a Dragon Corporate licence, it's licensed on a per-speaker basis. So if you're at home and you've got a family licence, uh, sure, your son can use it. Uh, he's going to have to create another profile because it's going to think it's you talking other than the son. But, um, yeah, he's allowed to use it. Okay, we've got uh, we've got time for probably one or two more questions. There's one way up the back there, I think. Sure, it's on. Yeah, okay. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, Derek, I want to congratulate Ian Wilson. Derek, I want to congratulate you on organising uh, this uh, event tonight. Uh, I think it's long overdue. You and I go back about 15 years now. Um, I go back with Dragon 22 years, so I've been there right from the start on the journey. Um, I think it's a fabulous thing for, for Nuance that you're going to have this uh, group uh, that can give you some input. And uh, the futurologist will tell you that having this sort of input group to be able to shape product development is invaluable to the company going forward. 
But I can also tell you that 22 years ago, I paid, I can't remember how much small dollars for, for the first version of Dragon. I haven't paid one dollar since. I'm still on version 10.1. Wow. Uh, I've helped Nuance and its predecessor companies who own Dragon uh, with uh, product launches and so forth. And it's a fabulous product and probably one of the, uh, one of the evangelists around, uh, around this country and New Zealand as well, having introduced it to a number of law firms. But let me make this suggestion to, to you and uh, to, to others uh, on the stage tonight. And that is that you probably will get better benefit if you incentivize the group. So to get the best benefit out of it, give some consideration to some small discount on future upgrades or basic products to those who actually contribute to helping you develop the product in the future. But well done. Well thank done, you, Derek. Ray. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. And that, that is a good segue, actually, to um, the next section. I'd I was like to say, did oh. you want to? We've got the technical support number here if you want to read that out, Derek. Oh, I was going to put it on the screen, Nathan, but we'll read it out. Okay, everybody get your pens out. <laughs> the nuance number to call for Australian technical support is 1300 856 388. So that's 1300 856 388. The lines are open 9am to 5pm Sydney time, nuance. Monday to Friday. And if you want to look in the knowledge base and try and get some additional information yourself about Dragon before you call support, you can check out australia.nuance.com forward slash support. And you should be able to find a lot of local information there. Thank you very much, Nathan. And so that concludes our panel discussion. I'm sorry we don't have more time. It was just getting started. I'd like to thank Nathan and Craig for coming up tonight. Thank, please join with me in thanking them. Now, we have one more thing to do before we're done. And that, was, and that was a fantastic segue because we have Bling. So as I said before, no user group is complete without Bling. And we have wonderful uh, prizes that several of our partners have been able to bring to the table here tonight. Now, we have, I can't say that that would be sexist, but please, Karen, come up here. So. The first prize, this is in alphabetical order of um, the sponsors' names. The first prize is from our partner, Market One. Where's Marissa? Wave your hand. Marissa's over there in the corner. And Marissa is kindly offered to provide some lucky person with a copy of Dragon Professional Individual or Dragon for Mac free of charge. That includes full remote installation, training, um, command building, three hours of training, in fact, and 12 months of 24 by 7 technical support. Wow, what a great prize. The winner is Dr. Jonathan Rutland. Dr. Jonathan Rutland, where are you? There you are. Thank you very much. So, Marissa, I'm going to give that to you, and I'll ask you to contact Dr. Rutland to provide him with the information. Thank you so much. Second, from Olympus. In a black bag. We have their amazing Olympus RecMic DR1200 USB microphones. This is a fantastic professional microphone for speech recognition that improves the quality of the audio going into the drag and speech recognition and makes everything work so much better. And the winner is Ian Wilson, Managing Director of Lonsdale Wilson. At least it wasn't the software, Ian. You don't have to upgrade. Thank you. <laughs> you must tell me why you haven't upgraded, by the way. I'd be interested in hearing. Now, Sennheiser was out there. Sennheiser thinks size does matter, so they've got the biggest box of all. And we have here a Sennheiser, um, I'm just making sure, it's a DW30 Pro 2. That means it's got, uh, it's, it's, uh, got um, what do you call them? Headsets on both sides of your head, binaural, but it's not stereo. Uh, this is a truly wonderful device that you can plug into all your devices, your phone, your computer, your mobile device, I believe and get really good sound out. And it's a fantastic unit. Thank you, Sennheiser. Um, no, we can't possibly give it to James from VoiceX. I'm sorry, James. I know you'd love it. I think you probably already got one, though. Um, we'll give it to Andrew Kemeny instead from Borel. Andrew, where are you? And, oh, there he is. And you have to be here to win it, by the way. OK, two more to go. 
Our Dragon Partner voice recognition has provided a VXI Voxstar UC Bluetooth wireless headset, a very special import that's not available everywhere that provides also fantastic audio quality for people using speech recognition, like Dragon. Um, and the winner is Jeff Simpson, barrister. Mr. Mr. Simpson, where are you? Is he here? Nope. You have to be in it. You have to be here to win it. Redraw. Okay. False alarm. Lindsay Fletcher. Can, where are you, Lindsay? Lindsay's up the back. Well done, Lindsay. Thank you. And last but not least, we have from our partner VoiceX a one-hour remote one-on-one -on -one Dragon training session and a very nice Philips SpeechMic LFH3500 uh, speech microphone for, again, for very high-quality transcription. So the winner of that is Rob's Wart. Rob. Rob's up there. So Rob. <laughs> Rob, I only have your name. So um, Dion, where are you? Dion is over here. Rob, can you see each other? You two need to get in touch with each other and make arrangements. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That concludes our first bling. Thank you for coming. As I said, I'll be in touch soon to invite you to join Dragonology formally. Nuance has kindly sponsored us for the first year, so the membership will be free of charge. And if you'd like to help out in any capacity, if you have some special skill, if you like bossing people around, if you um, like organising events in different cities, for those of you watching out there, whatever, please let me know. In the meantime, um, we are hoping that we'll all be able to get to the bar very quickly for the next 45 minutes, so please enjoy the company of your fellow Dragon users until 8pm. Don't forget to collect your special Dragonology goodie bags on your way out. And I think everybody, please give yourselves a round of applause. You've done very well tonight. Thank you. Thank you.